I'm reminded more and more that America, especially compared to other countries, seems like some sort of evil experiment considering what they put in the food, water, air, and now this. In 2008, the American Dental Association announced that the use of mercury silver or almagam in dental fillings has been banned in Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. And there's been much discussion that the health and environmental risks, oh no, not the environment, of mercury fillings in the United States as well as Europe for some time. This new ban was instituted because it's considered an environmental toxin as well as potential health risk in those specific countries. However, in the USA, the use of mercury in dental fillings is still approved by the government and ADA, American Dental Association. It is only in recent years that American insurance companies even approve payment for alternatives to mercury amalgam fillings. So they were literally holding people hostage at the dentist like, hey, you can get these mercury fillings for free from your insurance company or you can pay for the alternative. It's actually considered unethical for a dentist to advise a patient to have those mercury fillings removed for health reasons just because they don't consider them dangerous here. However, you, know, you can decide on your own as an option to have your existing amalgams replaced with an alternative material if they desire. I'm assuming this is because doctors in America never seem to admit they're wrong it opens them up to so many lawsuits, and not only those medical professionals, those dentists, the government bodies, which are usually part of the elite and 1%, don't give up any ground. And for anyone unfamiliar, dental amalgam is a mixture of liquid mercury, elemental mercury, and a powdered alloy made up of silver, tin, and copper. Elemental mercury makes up about 50% of the amalgam by weight and reacts with and binds together with those other metals to form a strong bond. It's a pretty effective way to fill cavities that shouldn't be there in the first place if you were eating a proper diet and following a proper lifestyle. These are often referred to as silver fillings uh, because of their silver appearance, although the use of that term is so misleading and it's not recommended because it doesn't actually indicate the metal composition of the amalgam and if it was just silver it wouldn't actually be that bad for you. So what actually happens when you get these fillings? After being in the mouth for a period of time the mercury starts reacting chemically. Within about two years they measured in studies that the fillings release roughly 34 micrograms of mercury per square centimeter of exposed filling every day. And there are many contributing factors that cause this, even just eating food, hot drinks such as coffee can increase release you know, by up to 1000%. Chewing gum drastically increases the release of mercury. But this lasts maybe you know, 15, 20 minutes after you eat, it's not permanent. 34 micrograms is significantly above the safe amount determined by the Environmental Protection Agency in the US, if you know, any of these government bodies actually care about your health, they say a maximum of 0.1 micrograms of mercury for each kilogram of your body weight. So, you know, the average male adult would only want to get eight micrograms of mercury. <laughs> and, you know, just like any toxin, you know, that they put in the water, that they put in the food, they say, oh yeah, it's okay if you get some of this. What that basically means is you're probably gonna die when you're young if you get this much mercury per day. No amount of any toxin, it's safe. If a government body is telling you that you should be careful about something, you know it's completely deadly. This mercury can enter many tissues in the body. The area inside your mouth is, you know, hyper absorbable. That's you know, where we eat food, right by the fillings. And the rate at which this mercury can be absorbed is very, very high. It can travel to your immune systems, the lymphatic drainage directly into the bloodstream. And from the blood, mercury can get in any cell in the body. 
it can disable, destroy tissue. So the form of the mercury in fillings is methylmercury, but once in the body, it can turn into ionic mercury, which is very active and dangerous to cells, damaging metabolic pathways, internal structures that keep cells alive. All of this destruction and travel, how much of it is in your body, you know, determines the contamination or toxicity. Many people handle this better than others. You know, you might get your nerve tissue completely destroyed. Someone might get headaches every other day, uh, but the kidneys are very high on the list of tissues to be destroyed first. Uh, so the symptoms you might experience from constant mercury poisoning are insomnia, memory issues, uh, people have like balance stuff, poor coordination, colitis, diarrhea, or some digestive issues. You can have high or low blood pressure, chest pain, headaches, dizziness, shallow breathing, asthma, a weakened immune system. And these are actually pretty general symptoms for any sort of metal poisoning. And even uh, EMF and magnetic field sensitivity, you know, I had the plates in my head from jaw surgery. I experienced a lot of these problems, insomnia, memory issues, headaches. So, you know, the poisoning from the mercury combined with the increased amount of metal in your head causing EMF sensitivity, most people are gonna have a lot of issues with this. I do want to thank Nebraska Family Dentistry as they had a very informative article on their website containing much of this information. And usually I'm pretty well versed in all health topics, but you know, I didn't attend dentist school and there was a surprising lack of information available about mercury amalgams online. They're definitely trying to cover it up and, and keep it as far away as possible from the mainstream. Now there are some specific protocols that dentists are supposed to take when they remove these fillings as to not prevent you know, more mercury poisoning. So by keeping the filling cold, like under a spray of cold water, they reduce the temperature of the mercury, reducing the amount of vapor that's released. And I didn't say that in this whole video, but the mercury amalgams release like a mercury vapor that can even be like measured with certain devices. Uh, they cut the filling into smaller and more manageable chunks uh, so you know it doesn't go all over the place and release a lot of vapor. They use a high volume evacuation, uh, HVE, which is like a dentist term. Uh, that is what constantly sucks up the mercury vapors, uh, very like high pressured air, making sure that you're not breathing it in. Uh, they use isolite, which prevents the swallowing. I think that's something that binds to the mercury and they also have an air filtration system in their office. So like the room isn't getting filled with mercury vapors. And those are just some general things I don't know the details of. It's just important to mention that this is not something that an average dentist can remove to my knowledge. They have to have you know, some more equipment and safety protocols in place to do so. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, hopefully, you know, if you know someone that has these or you have them yourself, uh, you can take some steps to get them removed and you know most people correlate their health issues to something if they're able to pinpoint and understand you know what point in time those health issues start occurring and what variation in their life changed or what medical procedure they had uh, so if you could please drop a like on the video leave me a comment down below subscribe so that youtube can unsubscribe you next week and be sure to check out frank-stefano.com for all of my businesses, you know, organ supplements. We have a bunch of nutrients that are very important for oral health, vitamin K2, magnesium. I mean, just about everything. I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.